Good morning, good morning. A couple minutes late. Tapping stuff in, push the wrong button. Uh, you know shit happens. <clears throat> Come on, let's get it up, let's get up, let's get up, let's do our work, let's do our work. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Good morning, good morning. What's up, Brother Kwame? Sorry for being late. Uh, I typed all that stuff in on my little title and then pushed the wrong button. I had to go back and do the whole thing again. And man, and I'm still kind of considering great Ujima to you. I am still kind of deciding on what I'm going to um, do today's piece on. Um, the last two days was kind of hard to follow um, with that virus, the mimetic virus. Man, Man, so um, after looking into that, you know, uh, I, I don't know where to go. I don't know where it's going to take us this morning, but we're going to go wherever it goes because it's about the vibration. And today, I want to say great Ujima to everybody. For those who don't know, today is Ujima, the day of Ujima, uh, Cooperative Economics. Right, cooperative economics is deeper than money. Oh, it was cool, man. She um numbed me up, and uh, I guess put a put a new piece into the tooth and stuff like that. It was all good, you know. Yeah, got, got some more work to do, but you know, it was a dentist. I cried a little bit. You know, with your mouth open, it's kind of hard to yell. Like, right, god damn it. Oof. Woo. Black woman, she was quick too. She took out of my mouth and was like, blah, 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 blah. I was like, damn, you done? She's like, yeah. Yeah, we got some more work to do, but you ain't got to worry about that too for a while. I said, all right. All right. Go home, pay my money. Day of Cooperative Economics. It's a day of reciprocity. I mean, and it's crazy how this principle, Ujima, aligns with reciprocity <sighs> and gratitude. This is one of my when when I put this chart together, this this became one of my favorite days. You got cooperative economics. A lot of people just think that's about money, but that's something we 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 definitely have to discuss because it's, it's a little bit deeper than money is about collective resources collect economics economics is is the science of resources not just the science of money and that's i think that's where we go wrong as a people because we think it's all about money but it's about resources it's about having access to resources it's about having access to 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 um not only capital but the things that produce capital. And one of the major things that produce capital is people and people's skills, right? So we overvalue money and undervalue people, especially people that look like us. So story of collective um, cooperative economics. You know what I'm saying? We need to really, really correct that. Must understand the origins of the word economics, law of the house, right? starts in the house i agree it starts in the house so we got people who want to master the world economically but can't master their home god damn it you know what i'm saying don't have an understanding that it ain't just money that runs the home you know what i'm saying we got money breaking up relationships we got money depressing people we got money making people unhappy you know what i'm saying and the striving for money rather than utilizing the resources that we have to create wealth, right? To create an abundance of resources, right? You know, it ain't just about, you know what I'm saying? What about the trees and the grass and all the shit that we be wasting? Good morning, Miss Sheila. Good morning. 
So we're talking about is Ujima, we on is cooperative economics, reciprocity. Um, reciprocity is the meiotic principle. Particularism versus holism. Word. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like we have been pushed to become jacks of all trade. And I often say you could become a jack of all trades or you become a master and rule all the jacks. You understand what I'm saying? In our culture, we often talked about mastery. You know what I'm saying? Mastery. We no longer get our kids focused on mastery. We tell them shit like, put all your, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You know what I'm saying? I have a question for you. And I did this in one of my uh, YouTube talks. Have you ever seen a farmer going to the hen house with more than one basket? See, because this is the issue. Even if you take more than one basket, if the basket break, you still gonna have to suffer the consequences of the eggs falling. So you might be able to get some of that. The the issue is, if you gonna ma if, if if you take one basket, as one of the uh, I can't remember what the guy's name said was, but if you are gonna take one basket, then watch the damn basket. Watch the changes in the basket. You know what I'm saying? Be able to repair the basket or renew the basket because it'll keep you from dropping the eggs. But in order to do that, you got to master and know that basket. When you know the basket, you don't ever have to worry about it breaking. Because you could tell when it's weak. You could tell when the bottom needs to be um, re -sown. You could tell when it needs to be fixed. You could tell when it needs to be repaired. That's called mastery. Not carrying three baskets to the goddamn hen house. You got to secure that damn basket. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of us, we allow ourselves to be fooled to think that we don't have to secure the basket no more. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? We just got to know a bunch of baskets. We just got to have a bunch of, you know, in the, in the age of... Um, Broke abundance, because that's that's the lifestyle we live, a lifestyle of broke abundance. You know what I'm saying? We we have a bunch of nothingness, you know what I'm saying? And we're able to get a, access to a bunch of useless shit. We become jacks of all trades. All right, we're going to start off with the water before we toast these ancestors, y'all. Come on, let's get this our shade flowing. I had to drink a little bit when I woke up because, you know, my mouth be extremely dry. Taste a lot of salt. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do another salt cleanse. I did one yesterday, and I, that's why I think I'm getting this salt. So, but man, I'm on day 11. I'm still having crazy dreams. Shouts out to Miss Maria Garner. Gonna drink this water with us. Water up. One down. Come on, get that our shape flowing. Y'all know a lot of stuff. We talked about dehydration. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, let's make sure we ain't suffering from that. Get us some good spring water or, or distilled water, whatever your choice is. I'm experimenting with the spring water right now. You know. By the way, type we doing today is John Eagle spring water so for all I know they got this out somebody's sink I don't taste nothing I'm just one. I 
forgot. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Speaking of watching the basket, I need to go get my cup just in case. This one don't usually spill over because I um, bottled this one when it was aged. This type is the beginning of the root beer. On my next batch, I will experiment a little bit more and see about the whole root beer piece. It had a nice little when I opened it. Don't look very active. But I had this one in the refrigerator. Let's see how it pours. Very aged. Now, when you start dealing with the, the brewing your stuff, one of the things you could do to help get the process started back up is to add just a little bit more honey or some fruit to it to get to allow that sugar to get in there, that fruit crocs, that fruit crocs or that sucrose to get up in there. And it'll jump right back to life. But I don't need that this morning, obviously. Man. You can see, you can see them swimming around. You can see the little colonies swimming around down there. So this one was, since it's aged, it's not going to be sweet at all. It's going to be like drinking a tea. So, hey, first, give an honor to the creator by whatever name you choose to call that creator. We call that great force in upon us. We already know that it's here. We already know that it's all around us. We know it's in, in everything. So we salute this power that made it possible for all life to exist. All animate and inanimate objects. We call on this force. We call on this energy to bless and guide us and to strengthen us and to touch each and every last person in our lives. So we toast and we say, I say, from there we move to our personal ancestors. We remember those that came before us and those that helped us form who we are today we lift up our glasses to them and we remember them and, and 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 we thank we thank the creator for allowing them to be in our lives and for giving us the blessings that they gave us giving us the lessons that they gave us giving us the wisdom that they gave us we lift up our glass and we remember them um We often, we, we strive to call them by their names, but sometimes we have to just, a lot of feelings to come. And as we start doing this, or as you start doing this on a regular basis, people will start popping up in your head that you haven't been toasting. And you'll start adding them to your family line. So allow your family line to grow. Allow it to grow and start watching your personal strength grow, your personal that personal life I say begin to grow, right? So lift up this glass and we salute our ancestors. I go down my family my line, my Brown, Miss Ann, Robert and Texan and Davis, I'm in Brown Senior, Rosalie Tilly, George and William Walker, Krista, Fanny Gasson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris. Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret Ellis. Cecil Ellis, Avira Brown, Wash Ellis, Wash Ellis Jr., um, Wash Ellis Jr., Gina Gaines, Montague Pimenel.
Vaughn Jones, John Fillard. Jeremiah Tappan, Dr. Marianne Williams, Elder Harrison, El Elder Harrison, Elder Donaldson, Elder Farmer, Nomo X, Sapat, Sapat Ma Ra, Tony Clark, Pastor Yusef Weston, oh man, my Aunt Barbara. Barbara Twiggs, um, Tony Clark. That's all I can think of right now. So we lift up the glass. If you got any, feel free to post them up. Other than that, toast your ancestors, we say Ashe. From there, we move to this present moment. It is Ujima. We kind of spoke about it. Cooperate, cooperative economics, reciprocity, gratitude, and the hermetic law today is polarity. This is a pos this is a powerful day. I mean, you know, every day is powerful, but since we in this moment, this is the most powerful day, right? So we need to make sure that we go out. We need to be looking for these principles during the day so that we can go on and start enlivening the concepts that we practice, right? So that we can make sure that we start identifying our shit out in the world. Excuse my language. All right, but we need to start identifying. So we toast now the most powerful moment in our life because we are only only ever dealing in the now we can never deal in the past you know what i'm saying because it's gone it's gone we can never deal in the future right because it's not here yet but we can always deal in the present now i am doing research on dmt and other psychoactive drugs so we might be able to do something with the past or we might be able to do something in the future. We just don't know it yet because we haven't been experimenting with those type of drugs in our community. We've been dealing with drugs in our community that only allow us to deal, not even deal in the present, most of them. You know what I'm saying? Most of them just allow us to numb our pain, right? So we looked up this glass we toast this moment and we say ashe. Now we move to our children, our children's children onto infinity. And we know that what we put into them comes back to us. What we put out into the world, it comes back to us. It's called reciprocity. So family, I have to ask you, what are you putting in your kids? Not even kids. What are you putting in your children? Right? Because we just got off the scapegoat, right? So we don't want our kids to be we don't want our children to be kids, scapegoats, right? Sacrificial animals, right? Nah, nah. If there's any sacrifice going on, right? We want it to be personal sacrifices that we decide to make, or we want to be the ones doing the sacrifice, right? We don't want to be the sacrifice, right? Unless, unless you have to be, you know what I'm saying? That's your choice. But we lift up the glass to our children because we know we are responsible for the next seven generations. Next, we move on to you. I toast you. I toast any struggles that you may have. I toast any um, um, anything that you have overcome. I toast you in your victories. I toast you in your defeats. I toast you in your happiness. I toast you. And I ask the ancestors to go out in front of you make sure that the road is smooth um why why i'm doing special libations simba camp is going on um and also simsa camp just ended maybe a week ago i want to toast them i want to lift up my glass to to my simba and simsa family and i toast them as well so we say ashe 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 I wish y'all peace, power, and 100 years. A little bit better. Hey, so this is, it's smooth, but it's heavy on the tongue. And I'm wondering if that's the cinnamon. Or is it because I'm fasting? I don't know. It's heavy on my tongue.
I can't wait to get hold of some sarsaparilla. Because this is going to be a nice, nice, nice root beer. It's going to be very nice. Going to help a lot of people. Mm, mm, mm. So, now, uh, I think today we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about seaweed. I know that sounds crazy, right? I just went from talking about scapegoats and shit. I'm about to jump on some seaweed. We're going to talk about the health benefits of seaweed. And adding this nutrient-rich food to some of your meals. You're not every It's not an everyday thing, but it's something that packs a punch. And I think that we really need to be looking at how we can get the most bang for our bucks while we're eating. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, one of the things that came about out of this whole... Um, and Guza Saba challenge was, of course, those that's been following, you know that it just started with just the days, right? Just shifting the days, right? And as I start shifting the days, information start coming to me. Um, I mean, more information start coming to me. The folk tales start making a little bit more sense to me. The, the proverbs start opening up for me and start making more sense to me. Um, and then... The whole diet thing hit, and then the, the 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 four, five, six, and seven. And for those that don't know, of course. Now let me let me go off just a little bit, right? Because this is repeat for a lot of people. But one of the things I'm learning is you got to repeat because the week the week repeats, right? The sun rises and it sets. It repeats. You know what I'm saying? So we got to go on and start repeating our stuff. And I think one of the one of the reasons we get stuck it because we get quickly bored with things that repeat. When in fact, in order to get to mastery, we got to repeat the same actions, the same thoughts. That we got to create systems, and systems are basically organisms. I know it's kind of hard to think about it. It's organisms that repeat over. And over again, your body repeat repeatedly digests the food that you eat. Your heart repeatedly beats. So in order for us to get mastery, we have to start being able to tolerate repeating. Right? We got to get up and we got to do, we got to set, we got to set rituals. We got to set systems in place that help move us through our day. Right? So, you know, hence... The constant, me constantly going back over, four, five, six, and seven. But it started with the two, two, four. What I call the two, two, four self-help process, where individuals spend at least two hours every twenty-four hours working on themselves. So boom, been doing that, right? Then discover four, breathing, water food movement right four elements that once we cement and master these things in our life we can live a long and healthy life a long and powerful life right because this whole getting old shit yeah we're gonna get old but do we have to degrade to such a point that we become a burden on ourselves and life becomes a struggle. That we become a burden on our children and life becomes a struggle. Or is there an aging process through which we get better with age? We become more useful in age. We are able to still be productive members of our families and productive members of our tribe. You know what I'm saying? Who says that we have to deteriorate to a point where we can't carry our own weight? Who says that we have to get sick and struggle and suffer? You know what I'm saying? Who says? Huh? You know what I'm saying? When you look at the pro when you look at how the body works, the body continues working 
The body continues doing what it does. All it needs is the nutrients and the health to continue, right? Then we start discovering things about the microbiome. We start discovering the power of breath. We start discovering the power of proper water. We start discovering the power of proper movement. Who says that we have to degrade? Yes, we have to fade away. But it could be such a, I mean, it's sort of like the end of a good song. That's how our life should be, man. You know what I'm saying? The end of a good song. It comes and everybody miss a good song when it goes off. You know, some of us got those favorite tunes that, you know, you kind of hate when it goes off. Like, I get like that when I be listening to some old, like a, a funkadelic tune. You know what I'm saying? The shit comes to an end. You be like, damn. You know what I'm saying? That's how I want our lives to end. I want people like, oh, no. Oh, man. Get on YouTube now and replay my life. You know? So we got the four, we got the five, right? Intuition, mental, emotional, spiritual, and physical, right? Which we work on all those every day. The six emotions, which we got from Brother Wakesa and uh, Aya, um, Aya Institute. Um, we got. Peace, power, joy, I'm, I'm mad, sad, and scared. You know what I'm saying? Those emotions, and when we understand those emotions, we understand how to deal with our lives a little bit more, a little bit better. We learn how to ask the proper questions so that we can get to the, the root of what's going on with us, right, for us emotionally, because a lot of us discount the emotions. We want to act like we Vulcans and we don't feel anything and, and we, we, we get rid of these feelings rather than really exploring what messages the, 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 the emotions have for us, right? What lessons these emotions have for us, you know, then we get to the seven, which is the seven principles, the seven life-giving principles, which brings us back to where it states, you know what I'm saying? The best life is achieved by the engagement with systematic processes. Make sure I get it right. The best life is achieved by engagement with systematic processes. Oh my God, my book is gone. Uh. So, I'm about to go and get up out of here, Facebook been on here long enough thank you for the share miss sheila thank you for the share mr kwame i wish y'all a great and magnificent and a powerful day i hope the principles jump out in front of you and you could grab them and get a hold of them and milk them for all of the wisdom that will flow from it because remember the best life also comes from the embracing of life-giving principles, and that's what we call on every morning, is it not? So, with that, I say peace, fam.